have now checked our wireless LAN, has the required coverage, that roaming between the access points is working. We've checked its readiness for voice and its readiness for location services. So now what we want to do is create our final report for our customer, our post-site survey report, also called an installation report. There are two parts of this report. The first is a detailed description of what was actually deployed. And the second part is a list of the tests that we ran to verify that it's meeting our customer requirements and the results of those tests. And so this is our post-site survey report that we're going to give to our customers as closure to this wireless LAN deployment. Now what we've done is we've created a checklist for you of things that you should think about including in your final report. And you can use this checklist as part of going out and conducting your surveys. So let's go ahead and take a look at that checklist. So the first item on this checklist is a cable map. Now the cables are running from your access point to the switch and each of those cables should be clearly labeled and what you want to provide here is a visual map of where those cables are. And when you provide this map, it's not just one map. You might have to provide several maps if you've done several floors or if you've done some outside areas and some inside areas. So think of this as a collection of cable maps for each of your site survey sites. In addition to the cable map, you also want to provide all the access point locations. And I normally do that as a physical representation as well. Some people like to put it in as a list. You should include all the AP locations within a floor, within a building, across the site. For each of those access points, you would put the manufacturer name, of course, Cisco, the model number, and the serial number. In addition, you should list against the access point the current mode of operation. It will either be local or monitor. And monitor is a deployment where you've deployed the wireless intrusion prevention system, WIPS. You should also indicate the reachability status of your access point and also the radio status. And remember, if you're deploying a dual mode radio, you must include the status of the radio in the 2.4 gigahertz band and the status of the radio in the 5 gigahertz band. For each of your access points, you should also include an IP address and the subnet address. In addition to the access points, remember the antennas. If you're using an external antenna, you should indicate the location of the antenna, the orientation of the antenna, the manufacturer and model number, as well as the serial number. If we come down a bit. I always like to include the power injectors. So you use a power injector whenever your run of cable is longer than 100 meters because your signal loss is going to be too significant. On your final report, you should indicate where the power injectors are physically located and the manufacturer model number of those power injectors. I typically don't bother with the serial number, but you could put that in as well. Now, many new 802.11 sites, particularly if you're deploying 802.11n, because of the higher data rates that you can achieve with 802.11n, you need to move to a gigabit Ethernet switch. And also, because 802.11n uses MIMO, sometimes that requires you to go to the higher level of power of Ethernet. And those two requirements sometimes mean that you need to buy new switches. If you have bought new switches, note down again the manufacturer, the model number, and the serial number. 
but also write down the software release. Your customer will really appreciate if you do that because they're going to have to upgrade and maintain that going forward. Also, you should note the reachability status of the switch and what's really important is to indicate which access points are connecting to which switch ports. Same thing is true if you've deployed new wireless LAN controllers. Note down Cisco as the manufacturer as well as the model number and the serial number. Also, like with the switch, put the software release on it, the reachability status, the IP address and subnet of the controller, and which switch it is connecting to. We come down a little bit more. If you've deployed new wireless appliances, same thing. Note down Cisco as the manufacturer. Put down the location and the serial numbers. Note the software release, the reachability status, and of course the IP address and subnet of each of the wireless appliances. Same thing again if you've deployed a wireless control system server. You may also have deployed some other equipment and just capture everything that's been deployed at this site and by now you know to include the manufacturer model and serial number. I mentioned earlier that you want to be labeling your cables. I always label everything. I label the access point, I label the power injectors, the switches. I put labels on everything because I just find that so, so valuable. Write down information about any labeling scheme that you might have used. It's also great if you could write down the IP addresses and the subnets of the major nodes in the network that you'll be using and connecting to. And they would include things like a DHCP, DNS, and AAA servers. I personally like to write down all the VLAN information that you've set up and deployed with. Often, if you're connecting with different types of users, like employees or guests or engineers and finance people or marketing people, you deploy them on different VLANs. So capture that information. And of course, write down the mobility group associated with your wireless LAN controllers so you can recognize as you're roaming between floors and between buildings. Now, each of those nodes in the network, the switches, the routers, the controllers, the appliances, your wireless control system server, each one of those have been configured and you've configured it to work and support the customer's requirements. It's really nice if you can pull those configuration files together, put them in a folder and give your customer a soft copy of that. And yes, they can go to the switch, uh, the controller, etc., and pull that configuration. But it's very valuable if you give it to your customer. And it's also very valuable for you to keep should you be pulled back at a later time to resolve a subsequent problem. Capture the license numbers and files that are associated with those licenses and give those to your customer. And the next piece then comes in to the test. So remember I said the details of what you've deployed and the test. So we've discussed the details of what you've deployed. Let's now talk about the test that you ran. Now, it's very common when you're doing a final installation report to actually run cable tests. And there are tools out there that enable you to attach the cable and actually run that test. So those cable tests will include a scan that captures information about the length, the attenuation loss. It'll test all of the pairs. And typically on a CAT 5E cable, it would do it to 250 megahertz. On a CAT 6A cable, then you'd go to 500 megahertz. 
also would look at the capacitance and the crosstalk. So collect all that information from your cable scanner and provide that to your customer. In addition, give them the wireless coverage reports. Show them what their coverage looks like. Show them the results of the last passive survey that you've run and also the results of the active survey when you've actually been sending data and include the iPerf information there as well if you actually ran iPerf. And if your site is deploying location services, then you should include the location readiness map in this report. And if your site is deploying voice services, then you should provide the voice of a wireless LAN readiness map as well. So I hope you find this checklist valuable when you're out doing your customer surveys and you need to wrap everything up and provide a nice final installation report to your customer. So what are some of the key terms that you should be familiar with? The first is the Voice Over Wireless LAN Readiness Tool. So this is a tool that's included in the Cisco Wireless Control System that will help you make sure that the wireless LAN is ready to support voice. And remember, when you use this tool, make sure you enter the right client parameters the access point transmit power, and of course the band that your IP phones are operating in. Now, if you're going to use an iPerf test, then you need to deploy an iPerf server in the network, as well as your client software. Because what that's going to do is it's going to send packets between your client and the server, and it's going to measure the throughput and the quality of that connection, and is sending TCP, UDP packets backwards and forwards across the network on both the uplink and the downlink. Packet loss is a measure of the packets that are lost over the wireless link. It's a measure of quality of the link. And particularly if you're making voice calls, you do not want to retransmit lost packets because the latency would be too significant. So if you're losing a lot of packets, you could have a significant deterioration of your voice call. Jitter is another measurement that gives you a sense of what kind of quality of a voice call video session are you having. And it measures the time interval between when packets are arriving. So what did we cover in this lesson? We started out talking about how do you audit your wireless LAN and we talked about auditing the RF, looking at the physical layer, what interference do you have, what signal strength do you have, where is your coverage. We then looked at auditing the roaming capabilities when you move between access points and hand over between them. We then went through a step-by-step -step process of how you can conduct a post-site survey. We then looked at the Cisco wireless control system and said, wow, it has a couple of special tools in it that helps you make sure that you're ready for voice over the wireless LAN and also location services over the wireless LAN. Very important to be familiar with those tools and take advantage of them if you're deploying a voice or location-based network. And finally, we did a demonstration where I showed you a checklist of how to create a post-site survey report. Some people call them a post-site, some people call them a post-deployment site survey report, some people call it an installation report, but it's that final report that you give to your customer. And remember, it consists of two parts. The first part describes what you actually deployed and the second part describes the tests that you ran and the results of those tests and why that wireless LAN is meeting your customer requirements.